right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm excited about this topic today because we have our subject matter expert, Miss Janie Jackson, who is the owner and founder of Develop Your Team on the topic of all the things I think we want to know about email. Is that right, Janie? Because I love That's it. Forward. <laughs> We're in a state of email crazy right now. So I'm just going to let you do uh, your introduction and just say you're amazing. I think this topic is so timely today and um, it is passed to you, my dear. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I am thrilled to be here. And this is one of those topics. I love the, the title of this, right? Because email is the tool you love to hate. We would love to not have it, right? Because the it's, it's all this pressure and stress and the, and the inbox is overflowing, and yet it really is useful. And so, which is, I guess, why the inbox gets so full, right? Because we use it, we need it. But maybe we don't need to have quite as much of it as we have, or maybe we don't need to spend quite as much time with it as we do. And so... This is about not how do you eliminate email, but how do you reduce the amount of time you spend with it? And so that gets into, you know, first of all, figuring out is email even the right tool to use for the specific communication that you want to have with somebody? So um, for example, if something, you know, email tends to be the default, right? And so if I think, oh, I need to let Michelle know about something, I'm just going to email her because it seems quick and it's easy. But if I'm not thoughtful about the right tool, then I might be sending her an email that is complex and confuses her and makes her write back and ask me questions. And then I get the question and it's like, oh, well, this is easy to explain. And I shoot off another email to answer the question. And then I get another question back. You ever had that happen? Many times. <laughs> time. Yeah. And you're being perfectly clear, right? Why does Michelle keep having questions? <laughs> That's what I want to know. But it's not her fault. <laughs> I know what I want to say. And maybe I've said it clearly, but email is not the right tool in that case. So one of the ways to think about it is, you know, when, when you're thinking about is email the right tool, the, the complex things, um, it come, that comes up over and over and over again, right? So if it's complex, then maybe an email is okay if you know that you're also going to have a conversation with the person after. It can be useful in that way if you send complex information to be previewed before having that conversation. But the, the problem comes in when you don't plan it that way then you send this email that confuses the other person and you spend a whole bunch of time going back and forth where if you had just picked up the phone, you could have resolved it. And you can't always tell right away, right? When you first send that email, it's, it's clear to you because you're probably immersed in whatever this thing is. So for me, it's like, it's also a trigger when Maybe I'll reply to one question by email, but if I get a second question back, to me, that's the trigger that, okay, I need to pick up the phone and have a conversation because we're just going to keep going on and on for a long time and, and we could just resolve this. Another situation to think about is whether it's maybe a sensitive topic. So... In, in your business setting, it might be if you're evaluating someone's performance or giving them feedback, like personal feedback or something like that, email is probably not the best tool. 
And again, you know, for me, sometimes I, I can't, like you don't always know, you don't always realize it going in. So over the years, I've just, I've developed these, these things. It's like the trigger for me. It's like, okay, when I sit down to write an email and I can't figure out how to say it, that's another clue to me that, oh, this is probably not appropriate for email. I need to call the person. Because when I can't figure out how to say it, it's usually about how do I, how do I write this so that the recipient takes it the way I intended it? Because when you have email, you don't have tone of voice. You don't have the smile on your face. You don't have all, you know, you don't have all those nonverbal clues. And so it's, it's harder to write things to make sure that it's taken the right way. So, so Danny, do you have, I, can I ask some questions? Cause yeah, yeah. I think these, you know, especially with women, you know, I've had women who have come back to me on an email and this is one of the reasons why I know some of you will laugh, Lori, you will, especially that women will say, oh, are you mad at me on an email? And it's, you know, sometimes it's like when I come and it's flat communication, no smiley faces, no exclamation points. I've, I've literally had people come back and go, are you mad? And so I think, wow, it's like, there's such, it's such a non-emotional thing. It's like, what do you recommend for putting a little bit of that energy or, you know, maybe not having that? Because I, I remember a colleague of mine years ago that put at the bottom of his signature line, I am not mad happy, glad, sad, angry, or ticked <laughs> off. This is just an email. You know what I mean? He had to put it like a little caveat at the bottom of it. So yeah. what's your recommendation for that? Yeah. Um, I have a couple of thoughts on that. I mean, what part of it kind of fits into like the overall structure of an email mm -hmm. and you, you know, when it's kind of a, a separate topic, but, but part of that is, starting with a, a greeting that is a, a little bit warm and but not long like one sentence because always you you want your email to be as concise as it can be so sometimes that can be helpful you know especially like it's i think if you have email interactions with the same person all throughout the day you're maybe going to skip that warm greeting but if you don't interact with them that often, if you can include something like that at the start and, you know, and if it's just like a one sentence email that you're sending somebody where they might interpret, wow, that was really brief. <laughs> and, <laughs> and what does that mean? You know, right. Then maybe you, you put that sentence in and then say some nice three word thing, you know, to, to follow it up with. The other thing that is tempting and can maybe be appropriate is using emojis or emoticons. And I mean, the reason those even, I think, came into being is because we want to temper the words with some of the emotion that people would get if they were actually interacting with us. And but then there's this balance because in your business setting, if you put a smiley face in your email, maybe it will be well received. Maybe it will diminish your credibility. So you have to think about who's your audience and is this somebody who's going to, to accept this the way it's intended? Wow. That, that one, that one I'm dying on. Cause I'm like, I just want to fire off an email, not think that hard about an email, but I do, <laughs> I do find that, right. It's like, if it takes that long, I might as well have written a letter, you know, on the old paper, the paper <laughs> and put it in the post office and mailed it. But I, you know, I think the do's and don'ts to email, like one of the things I've seen a lot of people do is they will put paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs in an email and they will ask like 20 questions. What's kind of your, MO, I, what I actually do with emails is I'll split them up into little ones. I might fire off like mm -hmm. eight different emails, but I try to chunk them up. And yet people sometimes will say, why do you send me eight emails? So I'm curious 
what your kind of rule of wisdom is on having so much information that, you know, people get back to you with those 20 questions. And then it's a matter of then you're writing like 5,000 paragraphs back or any insight on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like your strategy of sending multiple emails and, and really sticking to ideally you have one topic per email. So, and, and then subject line is a whole other thing to think about with this too, right? Is making your subject line really clear and really specific to what the content is in the email. So if your subject line is, is X and then your email talks about X and then Y and Z and ABC, first of all, people don't know what to expect when they open the email, <laughs> but also like if they want to find it later, they, they can't, they'll, they'll be like, oh, I was having this, you know, there was this email and it had such and such in it. And they try and look, you know, they look in their inbox and they can't find it. So um, I, I think it's a good strategy to separate the topics and then the other thing that I always encourage people to do is, first of all, when you start your email, you, you can put that warm brief greeting in as appropriate. And then the very next thing should be the action that needs to happen or the question that you have or, or what your reason is for sending this email. You want that right up front so that there's no confusion about it. And then if you need to, you know, all the paragraphs, um, that, you know, I think of that as the, the background information or the details. First of all, still try and limit that because <laughs> people don't have time to read it, but then put it in bullet point format instead of paragraphs so that it's brief and it's concise mm -hmm. and it's easy to read and it's much easier to write. Back to your point, Michelle, about not, you know, you're thinking about, oh, if I have to put this much thought into it, I might as well write something more <laughs> substantial. Um, and we don't want you to have to do that either. So, you know, but bullet points, to me, they're much quicker, much easier. But um, I, the way I think about it is, you know, when I'm gonna send an email, I want to make it really easy for the other person to give me what I want. Mm. So how can I make it as easy as possible? Put the, the action, the bottom line right up front, details in case they want them, maybe some nice warm thing again to close, but, and, and maybe reinforce what the request was. But, you have to kind of go into it thinking that many people are not going to read to the end of your email. So if you're the type of person, and I'd say this is my natural instinct, my natural instinct is, oh, I want to tell a story. So I want to lay it all out like the way it happened to me or put it in this, this story order and get to the point at the end. But if I do it that way, people are, many times they're not going to even see what the point is. So you have to, you have to reverse it and then be okay with people not getting to the end. Yeah, Lori. <laughs> okay. So I, I think that uh, that's interesting because I think it does depend um, and you got to know if you know the person you're sending the email to. Mm -hmm. Like Chalcetta just raised her hand before saying she doesn't read to the end. And I'm, <laughs> I'm the kind of person, it may, you know, I stay on one topic, but because I, you know, my history has always been more project oriented and especially in the technology space. So mm -hmm. I want everything in one email. I don't want to have to search my emails for all the, like I'm, I don't want five emails that I have to go find all my answers. But at the same time, I do bullet it out and all that, but I get so frustrated when somebody answers the first question and responds, and I'm like, oh, my God, did you not 
even read past that one question. <laughs> so it's very frustrating. So you almost want to say, you know, okay, I, I understand trying to find the balance, but at the same time, I think you got to know your, your recipient a little bit, and especially when it's a technical or oriented project thing, you need, you kind of want a lot, sometimes a lot in one email. And, it's, you know, it is a hard balance. And, and like, I, like I, I work with Michelle and I know not to put a lot in an email now. But then she knows <laughs> me and she doesn't expect me to put all this nicety around it. Here's what I need from you, you know. Yeah. Response. yeah. But it is much harder when you don't know the person well or haven't dealt with the person that you're emailing, you know. That yeah, yeah. I totally agree. You know, I'm curious, John, Jenny, about the whole like, I think, did Charles said it? Do you have a question? Or you're good? I thought you saw your hand up. Like, I'm skimmer. What's the action? What do you need? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and before we move on from this, also, I would just say, you know, to your point, Lori, I think that if there are five questions all related to the same thing, you're, you know, it all has to do with the same project or the same situation, then yes, I agree, put those together and, and don't spread them out. Um, if, but if, if they're going different directions and they're different, different topics or, you know, different, areas to address, then I think, you know, having separate emails is appropriate. And then, you know, I don't know if there are 20 questions that all have to do with the same topic. That seems overwhelming to me. <laughs> so I might maybe wanna, you start you know, off the email the with a sentence. Yeah, maybe you start off the email. There are five questions in this email. Please answer them That's all. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> You know what else I've seen people do, Jenny, is sometimes I, and Lori, you do this. It's like I've seen where you email back and you'll go see below and you'll have like just brief answers to all the questions that were asked. I find that, but then, you know, sometimes it's a hard time because then I want to go out and I don't want to highlight everything, you know, go back through and highlight all my answers. I'm like, you find my answers, but that's kind of, you know, that's <laughs> bad. But when you're in a hurry, you know, I guess that works. Yeah. Well, and when I do that, I usually put my answers in a different color. Oh, right. And then that right. way they stand right. out a little bit. That's what I was saying, bold or highlight. That always works. But, you know, another So thing I have is, a question. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I have a question about what you said earlier about, you know, like when you decide it needs to be a verbal discussion. Um, I mm -hmm. think a lot of times... Um, it becomes like, okay, we decided this on that phone call. You know, it's like, do you follow up with an email? I know we're, we're talking about trying to lower the amount of email, but I feel like, and I know it's happened to me many times, either somebody texts me an answer or, call, you know, has, verbally tells me, and I have no record of it, and I can't remember. So I'm mm -hmm. looking through all my emails, like, what did we decide? So I always, do you recommend like a follow-up email and say, okay, here's what we here's the decisions we made or something like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like everything, it's situational. So if it's a, a small thing, it, it, that's probably not necessary. But for if, if you've had this conversation and it was something that was complex and there are action steps that people need to take or something like that, then yes, it's very worthwhile to send that confirming email. I think for me, the, the way to think about it is some of it is about reducing, you know, just straight out reducing quantity. So don't send an email if you don't need to, or don't reply to everybody if you only need to reply to one or two people, oh, Alan, those kinds of things. Man, that is the one. <laughs> I think we hit a nerve here is what we hit. All right. Trump, I know. What? Hi, I'm sorry. The BTC no. and the CC. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but so aside from those kinds of things, like getting rid of the excess by being thoughtful in who you send it to, the rest of it for me is making the, making the emails clear. And so that you're, you know, first of all, it ideally takes less time to write, even though you, you do have to put some thought into it, but if you're writing bullet points instead of paragraphs, it's gonna take you less time to write it. It's gonna take the recipient less time to read it. 
they're not going to have to think about it so long to figure out what you're asking of them. And then you eliminate a lot of the back and forth while people try and figure things out through email. So, so sending something to confirm a conversation is very appropriate. That's not like you don't have to confirm every conversation, but that's not necessarily where you're going to reduce the quantity. Danny, what are some other things? Oh, sorry, Kay. I'll let you go and then I'll ask a question. Go ahead. Just a quick question. What about the, the people who respond back? They don't respond back to your original email. They start a new email and they might say something like, okay, that, that's fine. You know, or let's do it that way. And then, you know, not, I mean, it's been three days, right? Now, what, what are they talking about? And trying to figure out, because if it's not connected to another email, then you just wait for the person to send you another email, like, did you get my email or something? You know? Right. And which email would that <laughs> be would you, out yes, of the 150 yes. that were in my inbox yes, yesterday? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's a little trickier because that you, you can't really control what other people do other than maybe. Is there a reason if, for what, doing that? Is, that? is there a reason maybe they don't, for some reason they don't want to connect? I mean. <laughs> Can I give you one? Because it, it, yeah. it, it happened just this morning. I thought you were talking about me because you emailed <laughs> me about the other thing yesterday, the thing, the Sue talks. And it yeah. was like, I couldn't find your email. So I was like, I'm just going to hit her with all the stuff. And so I started a new email. It was like, it was more convenience for me, not trying to be, uh, maybe you're talking about yeah, something yeah, else. No, but no, I wasn't talking about that. No, it's probably you, you Michelle. I, I, <laughs> but that was about a subject. Somebody else might just say, you know, yeah, we talked about it and just do it this way or, or something that you, you have no idea about what it is that they're talking about. <laughs> That so, and my annoying. response to that would be pick up the phone and call yeah. them. <laughs> and then um, that gives you the opportunity to, because again, it's another person. So, you know, you can, you can't control what they do, but you can, at least they can get some feedback from you that, hey, I got your email, but I'm so sorry. I don't know what you were referring to. <laughs> and maybe they will start to learn. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a that. friend in Florida right. and Arizona. They both do that. They send me like one word uh, email. And sometimes they'll put it in the subject line and sometimes they'll just say one line and I, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> yeah, that would be annoying. That would be Yeah, yeah that it annoys is, me annoying. too and when I they put the whole that. thing in the subject. <laughs> wow. Well, now see, there is a trick you can do with the subject line that... Um, I don't know. I, can, I see this as a, a shortcut that sometimes can work to put the whole message in the subject line if it's something that fits there, but then you have to clue people in that everything is in the subject line. So you can put like in brackets, EOM for end of message. But if you do something like that, like that works really well within an organization where you've talked about it or with people that you've talked about it and you might say, hey, sometimes I'm gonna send you something where you know it's just a question or it's the whole message fits in the subject line, but I'm gonna put EOM there so you know that it's all in the subject line. Because I guess what frustrates me is if it's all in the subject line, but I still open the email thinking there's going to be something there and there's not. I'd be trying to figure out what EOM was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you have to have, <laughs> that doesn't really work with people that you haven't yeah. had this conversation with. But this is where I think there's a difference between maybe what you're saying, Jannie, is teams, right? When you're working back and forth on something and then, you know, outside of the organization, right? Because you still want to have right. that courteousness. Because I think that's what, I mean, it's irritating to me when people don't have a subject line. And I know some people forget. I've forgotten. I get that. But there, there is one person I can think of that never puts anything in the subject, or she never puts anything in the body of the email. It's just everything's in the subject. And I'm just like, well, good morning to you as well. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing where I'm like, there's no niceties. I, I don't like that. You know, that to me is even not even direct. But, you know, again, we all roll differently. So I think that's where, you know, to kind of know who the other person is maybe a bit too. If you don't know, that's, that's another issue, right? 
Right. A lot of it is situational. So another thing, so, you know, when I, when I work with groups, like working with a team or working with the whole organization, it's really helpful to set up guidelines or expectations or ground rules, whatever you want to call them, where everybody is on the same page about things like, um, what, what sort of structure do you want to use for the subject line? Like a really nice structure, and you can use this with external people too, but is to, to put a keyword in the front, like action needed or decision or info or something like that, and then what the topic is. Because one of the things that I think about is when, when people get a lot of email and you, you open that inbox and there's a whole list of things, oftentimes you wanna just scan it and see, okay, well, what do I have to deal with first? And so the more clear the subject line can be, then again, back to getting that recipient to, to take care of you first and give you what you want, make it easy for them. Um, but then there are other things that you can also establish in those sorts of guidelines, like how quickly you expect a response from an email or saying thank you for like routine information or tasks. And that's like, that's a very hard one to get past. But if you're, again, you're looking at people who get hundreds of emails every day, and then sometimes it's, okay, here's my weekly report. And then you get a thank you and then that person responds, you're welcome. And then you feel like you have to say, because, right? Because if we were just talking, you know, if I, if I handed you the report, you'd say, thank you. I'd say, you're welcome. We'd go our separate ways. But when it's in an email and it's one more thing that you have to click and look at. And so some organizations decide, okay, we're not going to say thank you. And it's like, the person that, that you mentioned, Michelle, with the, the line at the bottom of their email, I'm, you know, I'm not mad, I'm not angry. Well, we've established an, as an organization that we don't, send, we don't send an email just to say thank you, unless we really want to say thank you, in which case you would be more specific about it too. You would be saying thank you for all of the effort that you put in to make this event come out so beautifully. Mm -hmm. you know, that yes, that very appropriate. Send that, but just to say thank you, just because somebody handed you something, maybe not. You'd have you to know, decide. I'll tell you one thing that I struggle with, Jenny, is you know the the information gets sent, or I get sent information, and my inbox is buried, and it, and I'm trying to be better about just saying got it. I'll look at mm -hmm. it later this week or something. I'm still not great at that. And I know everybody struggles with email management, maybe me more than others because I complain about it all the time. <laughs> but, you um, get a lot of it. <laughs> um, yeah. When you say 150, I'm like, uh, let's like um, 500, <laughs> thousand. Um, so it's that kind of thing where you're sifting through and you need to unsubscribe. I get it. The stuff that's not important, but what kind of protocol would you share, you know, with people? Cause I think, is there anything you can say about email management or like what, when you get an email from somebody, I do like when someone will email me back and go, got it, you know, I'm working on it. And I'm really trying to be better about that, but mm -hmm. I constantly live in search because I'm looking for the other five emails that somebody sent me, you know, before I reply, because I probably missed one, but you know, <laughs> it's all about being better, not being perfect. I'll say that. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I have some thoughts on that. I mean, I, I do think, so that's where the whole thank you thing comes in in a different way, right? Because it's an acknowledgement that I did receive this thing. And so sometimes uh, I'll actually use the subject line for that sort of thing. Again, so people don't have to open it and, and see that I said that I got it. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that that kind of, you know, depends. But so back to the whole email management thing. Um, 
one strategy is to actually set aside blocks of time during the day just to devote to email. And the, the part that's hard to manage about that is expectations from the world that we reply right away to an email and that you know we have to be in there all the time but then we're not really very efficient or effective because we're distracted all the time by our email and so the thing i'm supposed to be working on but then you know the little light flashes or i you know i get the ding or you know whatever and i'm like what was that i wonder if it's something i have to take care of or maybe it's this thing that I'm working on is really hard and challenging and taxing. And so I think, hmm, I wonder if there's something in my email that I should be checking on, <laughs> you know? So I purposely distract myself because this thing is hard. Um, so if you set an expectation that I'm going to check my email this many times a, a day, and if, you need something more quickly, please call me or text me, or if you're using Microsoft Teams or something else, you know, but contact me some other way when it's urgent. And when it's not urgent, then expect that, that within 24 hours, you'll get a response from me <laughs> or whatever your number is. It doesn't have to be 24 hours. <laughs> I'm biting my tongue on that one. Well, I'm using that because I'm working with an organization right now that that's the guideline they set, but it, it doesn't have to be that. It's, you know, set the expectation and maybe you put it, I've, I've known people to put it in their email under their signature line that, you know, I'm, I'm even something like I'm trying to be more productive with my time, therefore, I'm checking email only at these times and responding within a week or you know whatever it is. And please, you know, if this is more urgent, please call me. Um, mine will start saying, "I'll catch you guys next year." That's what I'm going to start saying. <laughs> on mine. See you later, alligator. No, but you know, Danny, I know you see a lot of like trends with organizations because it really is about communication and then, mm -hmm. you know, just the culture of an organization. What are you seeing as trends that, you know, this is what drives me crazy too. There's a lot, but I'll share more is where people are now using Slack for communication, you know, texting with different generations versus those of us that, you know, grew up with email. I mean, I'm just finding so many different ways to communicate, it gets a little overwhelming depending on the organization or just, you know, even among people because everybody has their own preference. So, I mean, talk a little bit about that because when somebody texts me, I'm going to text back, but then now I've got to like copy text the, the text to put it in email so I have it as history because, I, you know, when you delete a text, it's gone. So I'm yeah. just curious how do, how do companies or what do you see with professionals in handling that? Uh, what I see organizations doing is really thinking about what, what type of situation is best for the different types of communication. So maybe um, Microsoft Teams, they're using the, the chat messaging for those quick questions or something that they, they need a quicker response on. And they still might use text with coworkers, but maybe it's for the more personal types of convert. You know, do you want to go get some lunch or I'm going to be late to work today or something like that. They might use something like that. Um, and then, but you know, email is, so, so email tends to be the go to and also the fallback, but, but for things that are like the bigger projects that are a little bit more involved um, and, and that maybe there's a, you know, a, a longer interaction, like working on a project or something like that. And I think, you know, there's, there's all these tools that we have for the quicker conversations where we used to rely on picking up the phone and calling people and now 
for whatever reason, we feel like that's intrusive, <laughs> but sending a text is not. <laughs> so, you know, even I, I find myself doing this. I send a text. Is this a good time for me to call you? <laughs> mm. Well, why don't I just call? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so we, we have those layers. Um, yeah. So, and then the other challenge is people spend a lot of time in meetings. Now they spend a lot of, like now our meetings look kind of like when we're working on our email, we're still sitting in the same spot, you know, in front of the box. It's just, we get to look at lovely faces instead of text. But, um, but there's, there's meeting fatigue. Even, you know, pre-COVID, many organizations, people feel like they're spending all their time in meetings, which is a whole separate conversation, like how to have the more effective meetings. So in those situations, if I say um, email is not always the most appropriate and maybe you want to have a meeting instead, people will be like, oh no, we have too many meetings. Yeah. We don't want to have another meeting. So it's, it's figuring out how, how to make all of them the most productive they can be. Because if you try to use email when you should actually have a meeting, you're actually still going to end up having that meeting. It's just you're going to spend a whole bunch of time working up to it, being frustrated by email because you're not getting the result that you want. So, um, yeah, I don't know that I really answered your question about no, trends. I think you but... did. I think you did. But you know, I want you to talk a little bit, just for a few, you know, just for a few minutes, because you're you're a specialist in communications with teams and companies, and you know, I think that's the context of this. Like, you're not sharing with us how to organize our email and how to follow up, but. You know, I know Charles Sutter will laugh on this one. And hi, Cheryl. Is um, I think so many of us get caught up sometimes in the the carbon the the CC versus right. the DCC. Can you talk a little bit about just you know? I mean, again, everybody has a different opinion on it. At some point, you know, when do we take off reply to all? Because I hate reply to all. I mean, that to mm -hmm. me is like I don't mind. CC or BCC because that's great. Then it's like, you know, I just peeked at it or vice versa with somebody else. But talk about that because that gets irritating after a while. And Charles Soto, that never happens to you in the school system, does it? <laughs> no, I could tell from earlier. <laughs> Hit a nerve on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. Same thing too. Like, really? Like, I, I appreciate it, but, you know, now I have to open yet another email. They, in Outlook, though, they have a little uh, check you know, like thumbs up, like I received this email and I, I could just go, I could just click that. I don't have to open it. Seriously? Where's yeah, that? Look for it. Office 365, I believe. I'm oh, well, that's cool. Show me that. Yeah. Just so you know, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in terms of reply all or who should be copied, I think it's, there, it, you know, some of it is habit, right? Some of it is we want to be inclusive. We, we, we want, we don't, we don't want to shut people out of things. And so we reply all, even though the conversation just gets just way too tangled, way too long, way too involved, and not everybody needs to be part of it. And so it, when it goes back to being thoughtful in the beginning about why am I even sending this email and in a business setting or really any setting, why am I sending this? What is the specific need and reason? And then who needs to be involved in this? Maybe only a couple of people need to see this. Maybe the whole team needs to see it. But... Um, I think it's perfectly acceptable when a discussion happen, keeps, keeps going in email and everyone is replying all and, you know, maybe you have 50 people involved and they're all putting in their two cents. It's, 
I think it's acceptable to ask to be removed from the discussion. Mm. Um, it's, that's another one of those things that if you can do that within an organization and set that standard that we shouldn't be offended if we ask to be removed because we don't need to be part of this conversation, mm -hmm. that would be okay. Um, I think another way that, well, it's hard, right? Because even if you reply and say, this conversation has gone a different direction, I don't feel like I need to be part of it, you know, please let me know if it gets back you know, if, if something comes up later that I need to be involved in, um, that generates still another email. But um, it's better than, well, I've seen. There's no right answer here is what you're saying. There's, what? No right an, there's no right answer There's no here, right, right? Well, again, because yeah. you can't control what other people do. So the part you can right. control is what you do and being thoughtful about how you use reply all. And so the, on the other side of it, um, similar to the question that you asked earlier, Kay, it's how do you gently give people feedback so that they can understand, you know, maybe depending on who it is, it might be appropriate for you to give them direct feedback and have a conversation with them and say, look, I notice you use reply all all the time, but we don't really all need to see it. That could be very appropriate, but oftentimes I would say most of the time that we get stuck in one of those, we didn't initiate it. We don't, we don't even know who many of those people are. So if you opt out of it, in a kind and gracious way, maybe some of them will start to understand that everybody doesn't need to be part of this conversation. And yes, there's no good answer. <laughs> yeah, on that one. Um, I, you know, I think it's, it's also interesting, you know, there are some people, and there's no one on this call, I want you all to know that, that there are some people that always send urgent messages with the little, mm. you know, the little red exclamation. And I'm thinking, man, every email is not urgent, but you know, on, on that one, I just, I, I let it go, but I'm curious for you about, you know, just kind of like the top three things that maybe, you know, from what you guys kind of were deciding about what this subject and what you see happen in, in communicating, what are maybe the top things that you see people do that we maybe shouldn't do, you know, in regards to email, you know, if you don't mind sharing mm -hmm. that. So one would be, to not mark everything urgent, <laughs> oh. be judicious about that. But yeah. but I, you, you know, I, I, for myself, I have the expectation that if I emailed somebody, they're going to get to it when they get to it. And if I need them to get to it more quickly, then I, I do expect that I need to text them. Or I actually, I have some friends just, you know, personal connections that I know that they don't check their email very often. So if I sent an email that I actually want them to look at, then I'll text them and say, I sent you an email that you should see. Um, but using urgent all the time totally um, discounts what that means anyway. And yeah, again, having that expectation that, that somebody is glued to their email and they're going to respond immediately to, to everything just doesn't seem appropriate. Um, reply all is, is right up there in the, the list of things that are the most problematic. And you brought up Michelle Blind CC earlier and you know, CC and, and blind CC. So copying in people, um, you know, I think it's, it's very helpful to understand that the people in the two line, those are the ones that this is really directed to, that they should, they're, they're the ones that if action needs to be taken, they're the ones who should be taking the action. And if you're CC'd, 
it's to make sure that you're aware, but you don't necessarily need to take action. And if you're somebody like you, Michelle, who gets probably CC'd on a lot of things, um, making it clear to people what things you want to see and which things you don't feel like you need to see can be helpful. And then blind CC, that one, um, when I see it used the most is in a very appropriate way. And that's where you, somebody's sending a mass email out to a whole bunch of people. And we want, we don't, we don't need to share everybody's email address with strangers that they might not want to share it with. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very appropriate time to use blind CC. The time it's not so appropriate is when it happens in organizations where somebody is not being transparent and they, they're, they're having this email conversation, but they want to allow someone else to spy on it. And so that's, to me, that can be very problematic just on so many levels. Um, and, and that is how I think about it. If, if you include somebody through blind CC on a conversation, then the, the person you're emailing doesn't know about it and that, that doesn't seem fair. Um, the other thing <clears throat> in terms of, of things that are problematic that I see in organizations is where you have that email conversation that goes on and on and on. And let's say you have a little project team and they're working on something and it is appropriate for them to reply all because they're, they're all part of this discussion that they're having through email in this situation. And so they've been talking about this for a week or two and they decide that they need to bring in another person. Mm. And so they bring in the other person and say, please see below or something like that. And now they've put this person in the position of going back to the very beginning and reading through and sifting through all of the information to figure out what's going on. When it would be so much better if they're adding someone in to give them a summary and say, here's what's going on. Here's why we brought you into the conversation. So it's clear, it's, it's, it's okay to do it, but don't make the person spend a whole bunch of time trying to guess why, what, why they got this and what they're supposed to do with it. Yeah, I like that. You know, I know we've heard from Kay and I'm not putting anybody on the spot, but Adrian or Cheryl or Charles Seda, do, do any of you have any questions for our subject matter smarty pants? <laughs> I actually no, do have I a just question. have been clearing out my um, oh. 2000 emails right before. <laughs> oh, so you should, we should be cheering for you is what we should be doing. That's pretty yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Adrian, you were going to ask a question. Well, I know, um, because we are essentially a provider, you know, we are dealing with other, our clients are other corporations. So we aren't always privy to their internal systems of who needs to be notified and who doesn't. So my tendency is, unless I really feel like I already know, mm -hmm. and I can just reply to the sender, um, I'm probably gonna say reply all yeah. Because maybe there are people that need visibility, or, you know, for accountability, like they can say, oh, yes, you know, the such and such team is already working on that. You know, as a matter of fact, right. they have a meeting, you know, next Wednesday. Um, so occasionally or occasionally instead of CCing everybody, if I know, hey, these are actually the three people that are probably going to be on that call. I'll just instead of CCing everybody, I will actually manually go in and add them. Um, yeah. But yeah. I mean, what, do you have a sense of what corporations prefer? Because that's always a touchy situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it is tricky because like you said, you don't know 
all of the details about how they would like it to be done. Um, I, I'd say that in general, corporations prefer that, that we don't reply all in general because it creates so much. But I, I think in your situation, you know, what you're describing, you don't want to inadvertently leave someone out of the discussion that should be. But you could maybe include a note in your email that says, um, if, if you don't need to be part of this conversation any longer, please let me know, I'll remove you or, or something like that. You know, just kind of be transparent about your thought process. I've replied to all, you know, in, ca in case you need this, but if, if you wanna be removed, please let me know. Just keeping you in the know, right? That's good, that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Charles Sada, come on. No, I was actually looking at what Lori posted. In oh, that, I forgot. Yes, Lori put and finding time to read all the newsletter and promotional type emails. Well, I do I have some thoughts on that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, oh, do, and I do special mailboxes. I have so much stuff. I, I just do special mailboxes. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah. I think, you know, I'm going to say this because I think one of the challenges is if you do unsubscribe, depending on who you know and who it is, I mean, I've had people come back and go, gosh, Michelle, why did you unsubscribe? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my and God. It's my reply to everybody. Just, yeah, I so I, I don't unsubscribe, but then if you have multiple mm -hmm. email inboxes, then you're like, I'd rather just, you know, scrub and delete and you know, try to manage it that way. So I don't know, I think that's, I mean, is that a preference or do you recommend having more than one of those? Cause I can't stand checking more than one inbox. I hate the one I check every day anyway. Oh, mean, did I put that on here? We recorded that, sorry. Do you mean a separate email inbox or a folder? Or a folder. Or email, because what, what you were saying, and uh, Adrian, I, I would have like a folder that's a subcategory it, on my main email. Mm -hmm. So if I have a newsletter, for example, I would then just move it to that folder for reading later. So as, um, is it Janai or Jan Janny? Janny. Janny. So as Janny yeah. said earlier, you schedule, you know, when you're going to be on email, you can also schedule when you might have time to, you know, review newsletters and things like that. But it's yeah. in that folder, um, instead of a separate, not a separate uh, email. Well, I, I have all my emails. I have several different email addresses and all of them actually are seen in one email box. So I don't have to go to different emails to see it. Mm -hmm. That would be frustrating. Like Michelle said, do you do that, Michelle? No, and they all feed into the same funnel. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, it, but, but if they come into the same inbox and you have folders set up for different categories, then you can see what it is. It's this you know, Monday morning momentum that I get every week. I can put that into the newsletter folder without looking at it if I choose to and then, and then look at it later at my convenience. Um, another thing to consider is just time of day. So there's this whole other way of thinking about how, how we organize our time. And 80% of the population falls into the early morning people or just generally more productive in the morning. So instead of, you know, many of us coming to work, you know, we sit down in front of the computer and we check our email to see what we need to deal with. And then two hours later, we're still dealing with email. And that's not necessarily the most productive way to spend our morning hours. So, so we have the, the peak performance typically is around 10 in the morning. So working on the things that require diligence and focus that's really good for in the morning. So some of your email might fall in that category, 
Um, but then we, we head down to the trough that we hit around two in the afternoon. And then we head back up to more productivity and maybe more creativity toward the evening. But the trough time is a really good time to deal with email in bulk. You know, maybe some of the less important things, maybe a good time to scan through the newsletters because you're, you're not at your most productive time then anyway. So mm -hmm. that can also maybe help with that. I love this because I think if we talk to 20 different people, you get 20 different, you know, recommended, you know, ways that they do it. Because I know there's some people that really focus on the rules part of email management that they, you know, like you said, the newsletters, they immediately feed to a folder. For me, that would stress me out having to go check the folder. Like I just dump it. And then if like it's deleted and I can go search for it later, you know, I always have that mm -hmm. as a footprint, but I do remember, and then I'm going to wrap up. I, I wanted to see Danny, if you can share a little bit about, you know, what you do in business. Cause I don't know that everybody on the, on the forum today knows that, but you know, if any of you guys have one last question or, or even one thing I would say is what is your, what is your one tip or piece of advice that all of us have on how we manage our email? So I'm going to ask that question of everybody, but Danny, for you, just give everybody a little bit of an overview of what you do with develop your team. Cause I've seen you do some really cool training, you know, since COVID happened. And um, I know you teach at a university and are involved in, is it adjunct faculty or give everybody an idea of what you do? Well, I got to be a guest speaker at Cal State San Marcos okay. one time. That's, that's my, my. That's okay, take it. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. Okay. So I work with all types of organizations to help people work together more effectively as a team. And typically I'm focusing on team dynamics, communication, leadership, and then um, coaching is a, a part of that also. I, I'll work with people one-on-one -on -one because part of building a team is building up the individuals within the team. And then experiential learning is really a foundational principle of what I do. So even when I'm, you know, now the training and the workshops happen on Zoom, but they still have, you know, people, people are experiencing things. They don't typically just get to listen to me talk. <laughs> they get to be involved, very interactive. I, I do like that you roll that way because from the, you've been a long-term CWI member. So I totally appreciate that as we celebrate our 12 years this, this month. But Yay. you know, I think at the end of the day, what's really fascinating to me about this is that you said it earlier and that is it's about what your result is. Like if you're looking for information, email's great, right? Like I, I do make a recommended kind of thing. If I'm emailing back and forth with somebody or haven't in a long time, I prefer to pick up the phone and say, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. I just wanted to reach out and have a quick question. You know, I mean, I could have been more efficient on email, but it is at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. So, I mean, that's yeah. always my kind of guiding thing is that I think we don't, we don't, we don't use the phone like we could anymore. And it is a really great way to kind of dial in with somebody and, and see how they're doing. So does anybody have any, like, a, I mean, we're going to wrap up with your best tip that you have on email. So Danny, thank you for being our subject matter expert, but you know, we have experts in here as well. And you're oh, yes. <laughs> the smartest girl in the room, but Kay, any like one tip that you use for email management or email communication that you can share with everybody? Cause I know you have an opinion. I hate email, but I love <laughs> email. <laughs> you love mail, but not email. Okay. <laughs> No, no, I hate, email, I hate email and I love email at the same time. Oh, <laughs> you know? love, hate love hate relationship. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So that's all I can say. That's good. I like that. All right, Adrian, what about you? Nothing. I think this, the smart, yeah, the smart mailbox or a folder just for all of the. I haven't actually done it, and I know my husband does it, and I think it's really a lot better. Oh, cool. All right, Lori, I saw you shaking your head up and down and agreeing, and I loved it. That the questions, what's your one tip that you have for email management? Oh, we're, we're not we're hearing, not you, hearing you, Lori. One more time. There she goes. My, my home phone was ringing, so I muted myself. 
I just, I like what Kay said that, it, you know, you love it and you hate it. But I mean, when you're in projects, it's a necessity and keep in mind that people are keeping those emails and they are many times documentation that people are going to refer back to. So keep that in mind. Absolutely. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Chocolate, what about you? I think um, I'm like, do I need to do it, dump it or delegate it? And if I can give it a, give it a, if I can answer the question within, you know, 30 seconds or so, I like to just respond and get it off my desk. Um, or I figure out when I'm going to do it. So it's just, you have to just get in the habit of it. Um, it's, it's a little um, rough when you first start that practice, but it, it really does help you, you manage what you've got going because it's coming at you from all different sides. So yeah. you ask yourself, do I have to do this immediately? Can I dump it or can I delegate it and do it later? And I'm going to take that to advice. I like that. D, 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 dump it, do it, or delegate it. Yeah. It. <laughs> I like that. Cheryl, what about you? Miss, I cleaned up my whole email inbox. I right? thought that was pretty fabulous. <laughs> We're all jealous of you. I, I mean, I, I did that this morning. It's crazy. But um, wow. maybe because in preparation. But um, <laughs> what I do you want to is, brag. What I do is I let... Uh, People that I get emails from often, like my client, I let them know that I don't do email every day. So don't expect an answer from me every day. If it's something that's urgent, it's the best way to catch me is by a text message because I always have my phone posts. So I don't mind the text messages because it's something I can answer right then. Mm -hmm. But um, And just set a day, you know, like today was my morning. I didn't I only had calls this afternoon, so I got up and I started tackling the 2,000 emails I had. And I do have folders for the promotional stuff and important mail and the other stuff. I just delete it. Wow. Okay. Love, that. Love that. Love that. Michelle, what about you, Michelle? Um, I utilize my out of office a lot if I'm not going to be readily available. Mm. Um, also, if it's important things as I'm just kind of going through my emails initially, I'll flag them so that I know I need to get back to that within the day. And then folders are another thing that I do for things that I want to review, but later. Love it. What's what advice here, Danny? It's like, I love that. It's like any final thoughts or leaving us when we can do it, we can manage our email and communicate better. <laughs> what do you, what are some final thoughts you have? It can be better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, clearing out 2,000 in a day is a heroic achievement. <laughs> but I love all of the tips that all of you shared because it, it's all valuable and, and you have to figure out what's, what's going to be the most practical for you and your situation. Oh, and here, I'll share this with you. This is my final tip. Okay, so this book, The Hamster Revolution, is a pretty quick little read and um, cute, right? It's about getting off that spinning wheel. And it's a whole process for getting your email under control. That's a book, it's, like it's in Kindle? It's, it's available, you know, on Kindle or do you know? Probably, I don't know. I like that. That's, that's the concept of us every day as entrepreneurs. And exactly. On a gerbil game. Okay, some of us in corporate, but I love it. And Danny, I want to say thank you. It's like, I know I'm excited every time you talk because I know at the center of everything for you, it's always about communication and getting along in the workplace, getting along in business, right? Is there, you know, uh, all I want to say is to all of you, thank you for coming. We're going to unrecord this here, but uh, we're going to be back for another Women Lead Online Forum and an Ask Me Anything session soon. So thanks everybody for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, right. Danny. Thank you. Thanks for thank you. all the great questions.